bottom part first because I want that to be colder and stiffer than my overlay color. So I do that second, but I'll set up my, my bottom piece and I'll stick that in the garage and then my assistant and I would make the bottom piece. But the same as when I set up uh, my overlays uh, or my start bubble for an overlay, I want to have a nice even shape. I don't want to be real round and bulbous because if you think about that, then you've got to widen your, your color out, get it back around and then narrow it back down. So I want to have a nice even tapered shape that makes it nice and smooth and simple to get the color out. So when I take my start bubble, my color drop, he keeps it turning so we get it right over top. I give it a little turn each side just to check it. It's just a nice little cut. And it ends up the shape. It's basically uh, almost a Hershey's kiss shape. He spends more time when he's setting it up, cooling the face of the glass in the back so it drops this one solid mass onto it. And the back of the glass is actually hotter than on the face of it, which gives me a little more control. That way the glass is dropping onto my star bubble, not pouring onto it. But at this point, I like to use a paddle, and I just push on, and all I'm doing is applying pressure backwards to push that bridge of color back up onto my bubble. And it ends to help pull that up. I purposely made my bubble a little bit large so that I can go through that you know, you don't necessarily always have to have your bubble perfectly fit to the size of glass. You can make it work, but before I do that, what I want to do is get a nice heat. I can come over to the barber, and I'm actually going to start on that edge and barber back towards the tip because that thick ridge is actually my biggest point of color so that I don't end up with really thin color on the bottom and thick color at the lip. I want to take that edge and push it back up towards the tip of my glass. So what I'm going to do now is that I've evened it out. I'm getting a nice heat on it. Where I will add, uh, then I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm actually going to pull the glass back so it's on the edge of my pipe. Now I don't want to have that band of clear glass because that's going to move a little bit differently than the colored glass. And if I'm blowing that up and setting it up in that manner, I'm going to make myself uh, a little bit more trouble and a little more of a headache that I want to have. Get the whole piece of glass hot. Then when I come back over, I'll use using my tweezers. I don't want to grab the color itself, but I'll grab behind the color and pull that clear back so that it lines up where I want it to be. And I'm not necessarily too worried about it getting a little pulled off center because what I'm going to do is go back in, block this back up, and center it back up. But I want that color up onto my boil there so that I have a nice edge. And you see I've got a little color bubble there on the side. One way you can get rid of that is just a little drop of water. And now my bubble's popped. I should have known that earlier today. The majority of the color I use is actually gaffer color, which is from New Zealand. And the reason I do it is because all their glass and all their color moves at a very consistent rate. Um, and it just makes things a lot easier. Where I can take really, really rich, dense blue, and I can pair that with a dense red, and I don't have an issue where one's gonna be um, you know, really stiff and the other's gonna be really fluid. You know, the blue will be more fluid, but it's not such a noticeable difference that it makes it difficult to work with the two. Um, and that's the biggest reason I use the gaffer colors uh, versus a lot of Reichenbachs. I do use some, Reichenbach and Kuhlman colors, but majority of the time I use pretty much gaffers. I'll go in before I get too hot, tips together, and I open up on top of the bubble, not trying to grab the bubble, because what that does is creates a little vacuum that helps to pull that bubble up. And I can cut it off without getting a big line pulled up in my color itself. And you know, if you're using a transparent, pull that line up, obviously it'll flatten back down, but it's going to fold over. You'll have a darker line across your glass uh, when you blow it out. So sort of go through it again. What I do is I come in, I let it sag off to one side, and then I flip it back over so I've got time to go in and, and grab it while it falls back on the center. When I go in, I open my tips like that a little bit above the bubble. 
that creates a vacuum that pulls the bubble up. I grab, kind of pull up, and then when I go to cut, I kind of grab and pull around with the glass as I'm going. That helps to pull that glass and that bubble out off the edge where it's nice and easy to work. But I want to set it up. shape it similar to how I set up my start bubble so that it flows out in a nice even way and I don't end up. Right now if I were to try to do this, as I put that on I'd have to come up over that ridge and I'd have to try to narrow it back down to that shape. So I want to have a nice even smooth tapered shape for setting this up. I want to have a really long tube. I want to be short and compact with it because the longer I am, you know, the more difficult it is to control, but also that means I've got to push that other bubble back that much further. Teeny tiny bit of air. Very soft. shape there that's even I'm not real wide up here it's gonna get a little wider at the back there but it gives me a nice stable point to control so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hand this off to Phil to keep this under control and just keep it warm what I don't want to do is uh, I don't want it to be hot and moving when I just go to do my Swedish overlay I want it to be stable and warm but I want this to stay stable as I'm heating up that top piece to pull back over so to do that we keep it at a nice cold well, hold the glass point standard, uh, stable temperature. I'll open up, but I go in right into that point with my jacks, and I want to move that back right to the edge of my steel, keeping my bubble or my gather on center. I'm going to use the back of my jacks then, just to start to shape that up nice and even. I want it to be a little bit wider than the head of my pipe. What that does is gives me a nice space for it to melt back or flow back to. It also makes my next gather a little easier, but it makes the whole process just a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother, and a little bit easier to control. Because if I'm just the same width as the edge of my uh, pipe, when I gather over that, I don't have a great connection uh, between my color and my collar. And it's going to want to pull off there as I blow out and it starts to heat up. So if I can get that a little bit wider there, it allows me to have a more stable connection to gather over. So I'm going to let this cool just a little bit, and I'll take a flash. I just want the very surface of this to be warm so that the glass stick, my color sticks to it. But this is going to be nice and stable and cool so that it doesn't want to start to move and shift around. So you notice that I'm not very far inside. I actually have the color sitting at just at the inside edge of the door that my collar doesn't get too hot but the color is heating up nicely. Now when I come out, I kind of hold that at a slight back angle. Let that sink back to the edge of the collar some. Now I can use the barber, I can use my tag. To start to center that up a little bit. divot there, when I gather, that divot's going to probably trap a little air pocket or a little air bubble, but also, you know, it might be hot enough that the glass, that the color is moving some, but it might not be so hot that the core is fluid all the way through, and if I were to blow into it, but the core might be a little cool at one point, it's obviously going to push the other direction, and therefore my bubble is going to be off center, which is going to make gathering over it a little bit more troublesome. It also makes doing the overlay of it, uh, pulling that back a little more troublesome. So now I've got a nice even flow on that. I'm just going to set myself up. I'm 
watching is I'm watching that light, uh, the light from the ceiling on the edge. See how that goes from a straight line to a bowed line? And that tells me that my bubble is in there. Let this chill a little bit. And I always gather over my collars just a little bit colder than I do over a start bubble uh, because I don't want that color to heat up and start moving around on me. You know, different colors have a different viscosity to them. This is a steel blue, which is a fairly stiff blue. Um, but I want to be a, uh, it's not as stiff as, uh, you know, like a red or a purple. It's still a fairly soft color. But I also want to be aware of the colors I'm using when I do this type of an overlay because I don't want to have, you know, um, say like Reichenbach 66 or Zimmerman 66, which is a really deep, rich, transparent blue, but it's incredibly soft. And try to put white over top of it in this manner because I'm going to end up heating up that bottom bubble and giving myself a lot of headache trying to heat this section and get that section, you know, together. This, the white's so much stiffer. So I always try to balance it out and think about either use an even viscosity color uh, or use a softer color as my exterior uh, color. One of the big things too is I want to make sure I have an even bubble throughout the whole thing. So I'm trying to keep my thickness nice and smooth and even. So you see, I 
we've got a nice even temperature. I'm a little orange here, but I'm not so hot that it's moving at all. It's pretty stable. Because I'll trap an air bubble at that point. 
Now you see I've, you know, I've got a wide point there, and I'm not really worried about it. You know, this, basically from here back, I can't use this color here. You know, it's not going to be on my piece, but that's all right. surface that the steel wool leaves on your glass is really pretty interesting. Like I said, you can then, you know, when it's cold, you can patina that with apple vinegar or anything to cause it to rust. You know, certain, there's all sorts of different ways to do it. Whatever you can do to metal, you can do to that.